Hi guys, and once again, we are continuing the track Typhoon Dolphin. If you are out here in Guam, Rota, or Saipan, I am sure you are making your last minute preparations at this time or are already prepared. If you're not already prepared, you definitely want to be making those last minute preparations before this storm does show up here as we go ahead through your day on a Friday. Expecting typhoon strength winds on the island of Guam there, at least on Thursday afternoon. Uh, it does look quite misleading out there. This image shared to me via the Pacific Typhoon Season Facebook group. If you do want to go check out a good place for some conversation on storm systems, I highly do recommend it. And somebody shared this photo from Guam this afternoon, some partly cloudy skies winds not all that strong and i'm sure if you were there and you don't know much about the weather or you're completely shut off with everything going on you might think well, where's this storm system it is off there towards the east you can even see on the himawari 8 satellite imagery just towards the east of guam we have our storm we did have some passing showers over the mariana islands today just one of those outer rain bands combined with the outflow just off towards the northwest another thing i do want to mention on this imagery is just towards the southeast we have another area of convection now labeled Invest 95W. It could be our next storm system. By the way, we have Dolphin, but if this one does become a next storm system, a name storm, it'd actually be the Japanese word for whale. So quite an interesting little fact there. But let's, of course, talk about our storm out here because it is continuing the track off there towards the west. At this time, Winds are about 70 gusting to 100 knots, pressure at 965 HPA. Key thing I do want to say with this, it is just barely a typhoon. And today we have been seeing some robust convection in the center of circulation. But overall, the storm system has been struggling. We've been seeing an abundance of dry air wrapping in from the west towards the east. And when you pull up the water vapor imagery, you can really see that. That's this is dry air off here towards the west being indicated in the yellow back towards the east, the blue air and much moister air coming in from the intertropical convergence zone and then you have that drier inflow in this dry slot really wrapping around that center of circulation so we have a, a very large area of convection we're dealing with here with the outflow off towards north but this core right here that is where the heavy rainfall is and those typhoon strength winds so don't look at this overall circulation and think typhoon no it is this core right in here so how about your microwave imagery you can even see that eye it's still kind of there but the big thing is compared to yesterday we were seeing a very well-defined eye and today i'm not just seeing it so that's the good news that dry air is keeping our storm system in check not for an extended period of time though i do think in a couple days this is going to become a much stronger storm system probably by the time we get out here through the weekend and the sunday after it pushes by the mariana islands but expecting this to pass right over rota or basically just south of rota north of guam Friday afternoon through the evening hours as a strong typhoon. Winds could be gusting up and over 150 miles per hour. According to the Guam National Weather Service, at least, winds as high as 22 feet, 4 to 6 foot storm surge, especially along the northeastern coastlines and eventually along the western seaboards, possibly as we go through the overnight hours, 12 inches of total rainfall as well. So let's talk about the timeline with this storm system because I know if you're out here, that's the key thing. As I mentioned, if you are out here and it is Thursday afternoon through the evening hours winds already starting to pick up it is a little breezy was we had on a friday morning if you think you're gonna wait until friday to make those final preparations for this storm i would like to say think again because tropical storm strength winds are going to be setting in through your friday morning or at least late morning hours it's enough to cause light debris to fly down trees even power lines as well it's just going to be dangerous to be out on the roads that's really the, the truth with this storm but it's not until the afternoon the evening hours when we're going to be seeing the possibility of the first sustained typhoon strength winds on the island of guam since 2002 when we had a typhoon blow through well, the good news, that one was a super typhoon. It caused extensive damage on the island. This one, not. It is a minimum typhoon at this time. Uh, I don't expect this to become a super typhoon before it reaches Guam. Nonetheless, you still need to prepare. And by Friday afternoon, you want to be somewhere safe 
when this pushes overhead and these sustained winds over 100 miles per hour and then as we go out through to friday overnight hours just stay indoors let the storm system pass key thing to note as i mentioned the waves and the storm surge and rota are definitely going to be there first coming in from the north and the east as we go ahead through Friday afternoon and then eventually switching in from the west after a storm system passes and those winds start to shift into Friday evening and then the overnight hours. Saturday winds will be coming in from the south, still going to be breezy out there. So think by Saturday morning, it's still not going to be over because these conditions will continue to be rough. It's not till for Saturday afternoon, the evening hours, when life should start to get back to normal, despite the fact we're going to be seeing some debris out there. Now, as the storm does continue to track off towards the northeast, I do want to mention we do expect this to really overcome that drier inflow, combat that vertical wind shear, and and this is going to intensify into a pretty monstrous storm system. And I say that with all seriousness. I think this is... <clears throat> It's going to be a super typhoon before it is all said and done. The good news, it is going to stay away from any coastal areas. Actually, expecting a recurvature scenario to take place. Jet stream over Japan associated with a rainy season front will whip it off towards the east we have this high pressure ridge well that's going to weaken so the philippines you don't need to worry about it okinawa you don't need to worry about it mainland japan you don't need to worry about it storm system eventually is going to get wrapped up with this rainy season front you can see right there let's actually pull up the upper level winds for you and i can even show this for you um what we have is our jet stream just off here towards the north that's going to dip down and basically hug this storm system give it a big old bear hug and then pull it on a northerly projection away from any major land masses. The Ogasar Islands, do want to watch out for this though. We have a few thousand people living on a few islands just off here towards the north. As far as the storm system though, I do expect it to get one more big burst of convection before it does get whipped off. And that is really when this is going to be reaching its max intensity so um yeah this is definitely the big topic out here today typhoon dolphin do want to continue to watch the threat of a tropical development just off there towards the east possibility of that happening thunderstorms and typhoon conditions on friday winds over 150 miles per hour even threat of some coastal flooding so you want to stay indoors if you are out here on friday in guam definitely the safest pos possible is higher elevations in a concrete structure until the all clear is given from your core conditions the local government showers continuing on saturday but they're going to be tapering off by the afternoon hour. Sunday, much better weather out here. Uh, here's something I do want to mention. Uh, I mentioned it yesterday, the active typhoon season thus far. We've been breaking some records out here. First, I, I mentioned that Dolphin was the seventh named storm system of the year, but actually something I forgot to mention, it is the earliest seventh named storm system on record, typhoon on record. So this has just been an active early season typhoon. He goes peaked at um, uh, 940 HPA record for uh, February. Typhoon Mysock was a record strongest storm um, prior to the month of April. Typhoon Nob was in the top five, brought some record winds across Japan for the month of May. Some people say it's the El Nino. And that's somewhat contributed to it, but really it's just been a hyperactive season. A lot of factors in play out here. Definitely going to continue to be interesting. One of the big reasons why here at WesternPacificWeather.com we do provide these updates. We started about five years ago is to bring you English speaking video weather coverage and it's expand it to our Facebook page and the website, of course, as well. So, um, yeah, I hope you find it useful in this hyperactive season. If it does continue, we are going to continue to bring you updates out here. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and as always, please stay safe out there.